Today, I'm fixing one of the biggest problems with 3D printing. You always have to be there when a print is finished. Then you gotta take off the old print and start a new one. I know this might not sound too bad, but if you're printing a lot overnight, most of the time the printer's just standing still. Right now, I'm printing a Gridfinity system for this entire workbench, and it's taking forever. I've already done daily prints for like two weeks now, and I'm still only one drawer down. So if I keep going like this, I'll probably never get done. So what if it didn't have to be like that? What if the printer would just push off the print off the bed when it's done and then automatically start printing something new? And that is exactly what we're trying to do today. So what do we need for this to work? Well, first we need to teach the printer to push off the old print of the bed when it's done. And then secondly, we need something to automatically start the new print. Doesn't sound too hard, does it? But let's see how it goes. And for all of that, we're using this Ender 3v3 from Creality. It's a really nice printer for beginners that's fast and also has some smart features. And the other really nice thing about this printer is that you're able to officially root it. But we'll get to that later. First, we gotta teach this printer how to push off old prints off of the bed. And the way to do that is to write some custom G code. G code is the code that tells the printer what to do and then you can just give it custom instructions to do exactly what you want at the end of the print. All right, the first try did not go well. <laughs> I made some changes and now it's actually starting to look pretty good. After some more testing, I realized that I have to wait longer to push the print off the bed because otherwise it's sticking way too hard. So part number one is working pretty well for now. The printer does its thing and when it's ready, it just pushes the print off the print bed. And that brings us to part two. How do we get the printer to automatically start a new print? I actually just noticed another problem. This roll of filament isn't that big. This is just a standard one kilo roll of filament. And if I want to print through a whole weekend, then the printer's gonna run out of filament and then it's gonna be pausing and not printing again. So that's why right now I'm looking for a larger spool of filament. So I'm thinking like two or three kilos. After some research on Amazon, I just found a two and a half kilo spool of filament. So I think that's big enough. And a nice bonus is that it's also a lot cheaper per kilogram. So I think that's a win-win. And thanks to the magic of video editing, it's already here. Wow, just look how much bigger this spool is than that. It's honestly not even a comparison. There's only one problem with this big spool. It'll never fit on the standard filament holder. But I'm pretty sure we can 3D print a solution for that. But for now, let's get back to the printer. So to actually get the printer to print the next thing once it's done, we need to install a web interface that also has a print queue. And to do all of that, I actually have to root the 3D printer. The nice thing is there's an official guide for all of this. The bad thing is it's way above my level of technical expertise. So I just read through the manual again and rooting your printer can lead to you voiding your warranty or even breaking your printer somehow. So I wanna make it very clear you should know what you're doing or at least know the risks that you're taking. All right, now things are getting serious and I still don't really know what I'm doing. So I really hope I figure it out and everything works in the end. Perfect, I've now watched a couple videos, read into the little thing and I feel a lot more prepared now. So this right here is the flash drive that has everything on it. This is what we need to root the printer and then actually install everything. And let's really hope and pray that everything works with this. So there's no real UI for this, but you have to tell it through terminal to install everything. So let's pray and please. <laughs> So the first try already failed. I'm not really sure what went wrong. It didn't find the files and yeah, I'll just have to investigate. So I'm definitely doing something wrong, but I don't know what it is. So I'll have to try some more things and then hopefully I'll get back to you with success. So I think my problems are solved and I just have to press this one button and then we'll start and then hopefully it's gonna go perfectly. So stay with me. All right, that, that's looking pretty good. That's, that's looking really good. <laughs> so I actually think this one worked. Now let's check if we can access the printer through the web interface. So everything worked out. I can now access my printer through the web interface and have a ton of extra features and possibilities. 
So now the question is, how do we actually get the printer to automatically start the next print and just keep going with the print queue? So now I've actually changed a lot of settings in mainsail and tried to tweak it so it'll actually start printing automatically and forever. One thing that's really important though, after you make the changes, you gotta restart the thing because I didn't do that and nothing happened for the longest time, but I think now it's gonna work. So down here I actually sliced something a little in Prusa and now I'm gonna hit print and then hopefully it's gonna go right here and start printing. So let's just upload and print and then wait a second and it's starting to print. That's amazing. But now the real question is if I upload a second file will it automatically put it in the print queue and then start it? So now we're just gonna try the second one, give it a different name and upload and print and then See, we have the first thing in our job queue. So theoretically, everything's looking good right now. The printer should just print the first thing, push it off, and then start with the next one. So I'm excited to see how it actually goes, what the problems are gonna be, because there's always problems with something like this. And yeah. Alright, that wasn't it. Those were the problems I was just talking about. Something I did or didn't do or changed or didn't change ended up in the print not being pushed off the print bed in the end. But we'll make some changes and continue and see what happens. Alright, attempt number two also failed. <laughs> Yes, it just pushed off the last print and now it's starting with the next one. So I think we're looking pretty good right now. So now that this is working, I need to figure out where to put my really big filament spool so I can actually start producing bigger numbers and really get that graffiti system going. One last thing that I changed was the cooldown time before I push off the print. At first it was 30 seconds, which was way too little and the print would just be like yeeted off the print bed because it was sticking super hard. And then I tried 15 minutes, but that was for some reason too long and would bog down the printer so it would just wouldn't continue. That's why the two attempts failed because that just didn't work. But then I figured out that there's a G-code command to wait for the print bed temperature. I set that to 30 degrees and that's a great temperature where it'll just go off easily. And yeah, that's what I did. So that's working perfectly now. All right, it's now day number three and the big filament holder is done and it is a biggie. <laughs> so this thing is specifically named the bigger batter spool holder. So while I need this to hold two and a half kilo spools, it can actually hold up to five kilos. So if I ever intend on going like really big, this will still work. I really wanted to show you guys a time lapse of how this was printed, but sadly my camera battery died. But now we can replace the smaller spool with this really big one and then go for mass production. One thing I just saw was that the new filament looks pretty bad. It was also pretty cheap. If you compare it to the Creality filament, you can already see that it has lots of blobs and inconsistencies. So I'm starting to get kind of worried here. But honestly, we're just gonna print something and then see how it turns out. So this first part actually looks pretty solid. I can see some imperfections here and there, but it definitely works and that's the important thing. One last thing that I noticed is if this gets pushed off the printer, it will lodge in here and get stuck. And we're gonna fix this by just putting a piece of paper in between the bed so it just has a kind of slide to just slide off of. Eventually I'll, think I'll put a box here to just collect all the prints, but that's just details. Another optimization that I did that you might have seen earlier already is if you do something like this, you have to leave some space at the end of the print bed for the print bed to come down securely and then push the print off. And obviously you can't have anything there because otherwise it's gonna crash into the print and you might break your print or even your printer and you want none of those. So what I just did is put this graphic in the slicer so I always know where to not place anything. And little stuff like this makes everything just a little bit easier and safer for me. Of course, blocking off that back part of the print bed will lead to some wasted space, but I think being able to print continually will more than offset that. So for the first time now, we're actually gonna try to print the, just the same thing overnight, and then tomorrow we'll see if everything went perfectly or if it all went horribly wrong. Okay, and here we go. All right, I just learned that if you're doing something like this, the printer just keeps printing. If everything's going perfect, but also if everything's going wrong. And right now, it went really wrong. 
I think the cheap filament didn't really stick to the print plate and then just a big blob formed around the extruder and everything's just clogged up. I just did some research online and the solution for this whole thing is to heat the printer up, get your pliers out and then, you know, with a lot of caution, just pick up the pieces and just clean it up. So the extruder is fixed now and I've also changed my startup G-code because the bed leveling wasn't doing as much as it should have. So now my first layer should be going down a lot better and solve this problem in the future. So one more thing that I'm doing is switching out the print bed from Creality against this one from my Anchor Make printer. I just found that the prints stick really well to this but then also come off perfectly which is super important for my use case. So with all of these issues fixed I'm gonna start the prints for the night and just just really go all in, print a lot of stuff and then hopefully tomorrow everything's gonna be perfect and we're done with this project. I'm really excited for it. After some more testing and trial I've made a discovery. I've always had problems with print adhesion to the bed and since I switched from my Prusa slicer which had like a custom setup to the Creality slicer I've had no problems at all. It was perfect. So something was wrong with my settings there. Um, so I'm just gonna go with Creality slicer for now. I've also made some last adjustments in mainsail, lowering the temperature a little bit where the push-off starts and then also re-leveling the bed and putting a new mesh in. So this should be perfect now, just making sure. And with this, we're gonna do another try and hopefully, I feel I'm saying this every time, hopefully this time it's gonna work. All right, it's finally working. These are three things that the printer just printed today. These were eight or nine hours, so it's still going strong. Behind me, you can still see it doing its thing, and I'm so, so happy. So it's definitely been a journey for all of this to work, and there's many small things, but now I'm at a level where I'm fairly confident that it's working and keep working without me, and that's perfect. So if you found this video entertaining or helpful, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more cool 3D printing videos. And I guess I'll just see you in the next one. Bye.